all right uh, we are in revelation chapter 2 and uh, i know we stopped halfway last week what happened to my video okay revelation chapter 2 was 18 to 29 now i'm going to read the scripture again because it's been one week so let's read the scripture so that we can refresh our memory Verse 18, and unto the angel of the church in Thyatira write, This thing saith the Son of God, who had his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent for her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation except the repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he, which searcheth the reins and hearts. And I'll give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Taitira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden. But that which ye have already hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I receive of my father. And I will give him the morning star. He that had a ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Amen. Now, remember last week, uh, we did a few verses, right? Uh, I told you verse 18 talks about the recipient of this letter, which is obviously uh, uh, the pastor of the church, right? The leader of the church and also the Taitira church as a whole. Then in verse 19, in verse 19, we see the commendation where Jesus commends the church for certain things. He commended them for their works of love and service. He commended them for the works of faith and patient endurance. And uh, he commended them for the significant growth, right? Although they were... Uh, 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 they were going through a lot of uh, other attacks, they just continued to grow and they continued to to expand their ministries. He commended them for these three things. Right? Today I'm going to look at verse 20 and 21. Let's look at verse 20 and 21 of Revelation 2 again. I'm going to just uh, focus in on that. Verse 20 says, Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Pastor. Yeah? What chapter is it again? Chapter 2. Chapter Re Revelation chapter 2, yeah. Chapter 2, verse 20. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Verse 21. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Now, these two verses, basically, the church in Thyatira, this is basically the complaint that Christ had against this church, right? And the complaint, if you look at the complaint, the complaint immediately arouses our interest. Now, why do I say that? Because the name Jezebel is used, right? The church, this church is, uh, is charged with allowing Jezebel to teach in the church. This means two things. It means two things. Number one, 
that the church was tolerating a false prophetess to teach within the church. Right? And she is called herself a prophetess. She called herself a prophetess. Right? She claimed that God had called and gifted her to teach, gifted her to proclaim the truth. So what happened? The church appointed her as a teacher. The church gave her the right to teach within the church. Secondly, the church was tolerating. This is the second fault or the second complaint. The church was tolerating false teaching. It was tolerating seduction. It was tolerating fornication. It was tolerating idolatry. This is exactly what is said in that verse. Right? Firstly, Jezebel, the false teacher, was actually teaching in the church. Contrary to what Christ did, or contrary to Christ and the word of God, she was teaching everything that was opposite to Christ and the word of God. The church was allowing her to spread a false teaching. Second, Jezebel, the false teacher, was being allowed to seduce the Lord's servants. Right? She was arguing and presenting reasonable arguments Deceiving, misleading the servants and followers of the Lord. And you know what's the sad part? The church was allowing it again. Yeah. Thirdly, Jezebel, the false teacher, was seducing the believers to commit fornication. That is all matter, all that is, uh, when I say fornication, it means all manner of immoral acts. How could such a teaching be allowed within the church? By a very, by this teaching, uh, 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 the, the church allowed this teaching to continue. Down through the centuries, we see the same problem existing in even, even in our present day church. It, it, it has infl infiltrates or infiltrated many churches right now what was she teaching she was teaching that believers could not separate themselves from the world and i'm sure this is a common statement that you'll find oh we must be in the world we are in the world so we must be with the world she was teaching them not to separate themselves from the world not entirely not without becoming exclusive and snobbish she was teaching that believers needed to be sensible in dealing with the world and its functions. They needed to be participating in some of the world's functions in order to be friendly, in order to keep their jobs, in order to secure promotions, in order to help their businesses. They have to keep from being, con uh, uh, and to keep themselves from being considered fanatical and win the lost. <clears throat> she was teaching that believers could reach the world more easily by associating and fellowshipping with the world. She was teaching that if a person really worshipped God, he would be acceptable to God even if he did not know about Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ is not the only way to God. That he is not the only saviour. This is what she was teaching. And if you look at the false teachers today, they go under the same line. They will start off very subtle. They give you philosophical teachings. Right? And slowly they will tell you Jesus is not the only way. And many, many, many popular figures in church history have fallen. Or continue to fall. She was telling or she was teaching that believers should attend the social functions of neighbors and fellow workers and not be exclusive and, 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 and not to be a separatist. Right now, I want you to remember what I told you last week. Tyatira was a renowned or was a town or a city that was renowned for its trade unions. Right, they were the center of much of the city's social and business life. So, if believers did not attend these functions and the social gatherings, there was a possibility that it might affect their employment. It might affect their relationships, uh, uh, you know, their relationships with their neighbors, in their jobs, in their businesses. 
So the argument of the false teacher Jezebel had a strong appeal. It would take a strong-minded minister, it will take a strong-minded teacher to proclaim a life of separation in such a situation. So what happened, of course, what that many of the socials became drunken and immoral parties. All the social gatherings that they attended, it ended up being a drunken and immoral parties. Believers who were present were attracted to the opposite sex and caught up in immoral affairs just like everyone else. Believers were having immoral affairs, committing fornication. I am not saying it. The Bible tells us that. So naturally, the believer, when they attended such functions, they did not want to be misfits. So they would be sociable. They will drink and dance and participate in the activities of their neighbors. The end result was bound to happen. Believers were caught up in the drunken immorality of the world. They had normal human desires, just like all human beings. Therefore, they were attracted to the opposite sex, and some became involved in immoral affairs, committing adultery. Now, I want you to remember why. The simple reason is this. It's all because of the false teaching of Jezebel, that believers must not separate themselves from the world that they must be sensible and reasonable and not cut themselves out of the necessary business functions, social gatherings, and pleasures of the world. The fourth thing that is said about Jezebel here is, Jezebel is the false teacher. She was seducing believers to commit idolatry. Some of the functions of the trade unions were usually held in the temple precincts of false gods. Sometimes the socials involve a simple tank, uh, uh, thanksgiving or tank offering to the God, much like our offering to, of thanks at meals. The very first piece of meat was laid upon the altar to their gods. Remember their gods, yeah? small g. Then the rest of the meat was served to the guests, and some of the believers were participating in these functions actually participating in the functions that gave thanks to false gods. They actually participated in those functions. Now, for today's context, I want you to understand something. I want you to remember what idolatry is. An idol is anything that you put first in your life. Anything that consumes your heart, your mind, your soul, and your body. An idol is that to which a person gives himself. So an idol can be a job, an idol can be money, position, possessions, pleasures, sports, business, family. Idol can be self, idol can be sex, knowledge, power, and the list can go on and on. So some of these church members in this city they were apparently putting their jobs and they were putting their social acceptance before God. They were attending the social functions to be socially acceptable, to secure their jobs and to prosper in the world. But the inevitable happened. They were influenced by the world. They were caught up in the compromise of the world. All because of some Jezebel some false teacher in the church. And note that Jesus Christ, what Jesus Christ has given this false teacher, this Jezebel, Jesus gives this Jezebel a period to repent. This means that she knew deep down within her heart that she was teaching contrary to God's word. But she refused to change. She refused to repent. In John chapter 15, verse 19, let me give you a scripture for reference. Huh? John chapter 15, verse 19, it says, Jesus said this, If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, 
Therefore, the world hated you. That's what Jesus said. Let's look at verse 22 and 23. Of Revelation chapter 2, verse 22 to 23. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with that, and all churches shall know I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. That is the warning. Christ warns the church. That is the warning to those who compromise. That is the warning for those who are corrupted. There are five points that I'm going to give you on this. Firstly, there's the warning to Jezebel. She is to be cast upon a bed of sickness. Now this probably means some venereal disease or some disease of cirrhosis of the liver due to excess drinking. Her judgment was to match her sin, to be a direct result of her sin. She was to reap what she sowed. And let me give you another scripture reference for that. Matthew 7 verse 2, this is what Jesus said. For with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. Secondly, there's the warning to those who gave in to her seduction, who gave in to her lifestyle. To those who refuse to turn to Christ, to those who refuse to separate themselves from the world. There's a warning. They were to suffer great tribul uh, tribulation. The idea is some severe affliction, deep suffering, oppressing distress. Thirdly, the third warning is to the children of Jezebel. Now, who are these children? Whether it's her real children or those who swallowed her false teaching and worldly lifestyle, we do not know. But in either case, in either case, they were to be killed. What does this mean? You know, if, if you uh, 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 later on when you're free, you read 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27 to 30, it says uh, uh, that chastising the hand of God, such as fell upon some of the Corinthian believers. Right? It could mean that. Right? Uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 30, it says, For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep, or many have died. Right? It could also mean a second death. That means the judgment of eternal death. When we stand face to face with Christ in the final judgment day. Right? Fourthly, there was still time for all of these to repent. Imagine that. Despite the sin, despite the problems and the challenges, Christ still loved and reached out, not to the church, but to Jezebel. To the church as well, but he also includes Jezebel in it. And, and, and this false teacher and her followers were all included in it. Despite all the corruption they have, they have caused in this great church, Christ still gave them a chance to repent. Christ said that the judgment will only happen if they have failed to repent of their deeds. I want to tell you this today. No matter what your situation if you are in a situation where you need to repent, do it now. Don't wait. Do it now. Repent. Because Christ is waiting. Now this is a wonderful thing. Because we can still repent so long as we are living in this earth. It is not too late. No matter what we have done. No matter how terrible the thing that we have done. Christ is still calling his church to repent. And if we repent, he saves us, he delivers us from the judgment that's to come. Amen. Amen. Acts, Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Acts chapter 3 verse 19. 
Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And number five, the fifth point, I want you to take note why Christ is going to judge those who compromise with the world and corrupt the church. Why is Christ going to judge? Remember verse 23, it says, All the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins on heart and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Now, Christ is going to judge those who compromise so that all, church, all the churches may know and acknowledge that he is the Christ, the sovereign head of the universe. They will begin to acknowledge that he is the one who searches the minds, the thoughts, and the hearts of the people. And secondly, Christ is going to judge those who compromise so that every person will be treated fairly and justly. So that justice will be executed within the church and the world. And his judgment will be perfectly executed. You know, in Psalm 62 verse 12, Psalms 62 verse 12, the psalmist says, Also unto thee, O Lord, belongeth mercy, for thou renderest to every man according to his work. Perfectly executed judgment. I, I, I'm going to stop here. Next week we will do the, the rest of it. But I just want you to consider two things as I close today. The complaints made against the church. This church that was doing so much of ministry. This church that was growing strong. The complaints that Christ had against it. And the warning of what was going to happen to them. And the call for repentance. I want to encourage you to evaluate your life. Remember, you and I are the church, not the building. You and I are the church. Call to mind the areas. Ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Sometimes these things are deeply embedded in us. You can't get it overnight. You can't get it over this conversation. Go back and ask the Holy Spirit. Search your heart. Sometimes we are, we are too much into doing what we are doing. Our style of doing it. And we do not want to open up and we don't want to allow the Holy Spirit. We think we are doing right. Ask the Holy Spirit. Let God be God, my dear people. Let God be God. Ask Him to speak to you, to show you areas where we need to repent. Where we have compromised knowingly or unknowingly. Come back to Him. I, I, I'm telling you this. You will not regret it. Come back fully, surrender fully to him and you will see, you will see, you will be contented, you will have the peace and you will, you, you, will, you will be well. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word this evening, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you continue to do in our lives. You have heard our prayers tonight. You have, we have heard your word, Lord. So Holy Spirit, I pray this evening, as even as we, we, we get ready for Sunday's worship, even as we get ready for another new week, Lord, we pray and we ask you, Lord, to guide us, to show us areas that we need to repent from. And Lord, in areas where we have compromised and in areas where we have not put you, number one, Father, we ask you for forgiveness. We ask you, Lord, for forgiveness. We say we are sorry, Lord. And we say, Lord, that give us the strength not to look to the other side again. Not to compromise our positions as your sons. And Lord, we pray, Lord, that we will, be, we will receive the promises, the promises of a son that is faithful, of a son that is steadfast. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I've got a Bible verse to share. Yes. Uh, Deuteronomy 
chapter 13.